Skip the takeout and do pizza night at home with these easy recipes. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, here's a few things to know about me. I love food, I love cooking, and I'm a dietitian. Eating well does not have to mean giving up all the foods that we think are bad. And boy, do I hate when foods are labeled as good or bad. Food is food. When we nourish our bodies with lots of vegetables and fruits and whole grains, beans and legumes, then we get to the point of food freedom. Another thing to know about me is I'm a mom to three young boys, which means we have pizza night in my house at least once a month. And if you've seen my zucchini pasta video, then you'll know that my five-year-old's second favorite food behind zucchini pasta is pizza. Plus, pizza is an excellent vehicle for so many veggies. So let's get started making this homemade pizza. To make our dough, grab a large bowl, like I have this one here, and we'll start with our flours. Two cups of all-purpose flour, two, and then one cup of whole wheat flour. This combination I've found makes it still light, but gives us that extra fiber and nutrients we want. And then a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt, half a teaspoon of dry active yeast in. I'm gonna give that just a little mix around with our spatula and then water. So it's one and a quarter cups of water. Go. And we're mixing it. I'm gonna mix until the water is fully incorporated into the dough. And this is gonna be a shaggy dough. Okay, so like I said, a shaggy dough, it, you know, it's formed together. It's gonna do its thing. We don't have to mess with it. Now that it's formed up, we are gonna cover it with some plastic wrap or a nice tight dish towel, and then let it sit for at least four hours, up to eight hours. I usually mix this up in the morning, and then it is ready to roll out around dinner time. While our dough and our yeast do their thing and bubble up and rise, we're gonna work on our sauce so we have it ready for pizza time later tonight. And what I love about this sauce is it's a no-cook sauce. We dump everything in the food processor, whir it up, and then pop it in the fridge so it's ready for later. We're well, starting with 28 ounces of canned whole tomatoes. So we have our whole can. I drain off a little of the liquid so that the sauce is nice and thick. Okay, now the whole can goes in. Pop her in right there. And then olive oil, one tablespoon of olive oil. Just gives the sauce nice sheen to it, a little creaminess, and a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. And I love the balsamic in here because it gives the sauce just a hint of sweetness. Half a teaspoon of kosher salt, quarter teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. So a couple turns, a little squeaky. And then, one clove of garlic, and here's a tip. When you're using garlic fresh, take the germ out. See this little part in the middle? I learned this when I took a cooking class in Paris. The germ can sometimes make garlic a little strong. We take that part out, and we're gonna put the rest of the clove in. Now the clove goes in. The germ can give the garlic sometimes a little bit of a harshness. If you've ever had something with fresh garlic where it's almost a little bit burny on your mouth, that's the germ. So if you take that out when you're using garlic in its fresh form, it helps mellow it out. The lid on, put on the right way, and we wear it up. Now here's a key step. Always taste test. Plus we have a couple chunks that didn't get fully mixed. So let's do a test. Usually my kids do this and they always tell me, more balsamic, mom. So a splash more balsamic, and depending on what brand of balsamic you have, will depend on how sweet it adds to your sauce. There we go. One more taste test. Perfect, perfect for pizza. 
I'm gonna pop this into a container, put it in the fridge so it's ready for pizza night later tonight. It's been four hours since we mixed up our dough. Let's check it to see how it's bubbled and risen. Ooh, looking good. Next step is to preheat your oven. I've got mine on 450. It's pretty hot, but we're making pizza and that's why. And then you wanna get your pan. So you can use a pizza stone like this guy and it's 14 inches around, or you can use a sheet tray. I'm gonna show you both today. Cornmeal is key to pizza making. You wanna sprinkle your sheet tray or your pizza stone with cornmeal, whichever one you're using, and do a nice thin layer across it. It's gonna do two things. One, help the pizza not to stick, which is kind of key in making pizza, and then it also gives you that little bit of extra crunch on the bottom, so good. So let's sprinkle our trays. We have our sheet trays ready with cornmeal, now we need to set up to get ready to roll. Flour is key. Sprinkle flour, kind of like you did with the cornmeal, over your workspace, not in one big clump. Sprinkle it out because we are rolling this out. Depending on whether you're rolling a circle for your pizza stone or a rectangle for your sheet tray, depends on your area you're putting flour, but it's kind of gonna get everywhere, so just lean into it, it's all good. And then I leave a little extra flour in my measuring cup so I'm good to go. Flour your rolling pin, let's get to rolling. We wanna flour our hands, to get this dough out of the bowl and then plop it right onto our prepared, I want every bit, workspace. Now I give the dough a little love here, give it a few pushes and pulls so it's a nice little ball and then it's ready to roll out. And you can tell it's got lots of bounce to it, it is good. Okay, with your rolling pin, you always start from the center and roll out, center and roll out. And then we can rotate our dough. I'm gonna start with the circle for my pizza stone. Center and roll out, center and roll out. I'm gonna keep going until it is a little bit larger than the size of my pizza stone. And then I have a trick for getting it onto your prepared pizza stone. Keep going around. And if it does start to stick, grab a little flour and you can put a little bit more underneath. So always start from the center and push out. And making a circle, I think kind of almost easier than making the rectangle, because you're just moving around in the same direction. We're almost there. You can see the flex of the whole wheat, but you can tell just by looking at this dough and how supple it is, it's gonna be a nice, soft, that sort of hand-tossed texture pizza dough, it's fantastic. Stuck to my rolling pin, so I just add a little more flour, and I think we're good, but you can always do a test. Check out this test. Grab your stone, is it the size? Perfect, I like to fold over the edge so we get a little extra thick crust. So this is perfect. Here's the trick, take your rolling pin, to the edge of your dough, fold it up, and then just gently roll it up onto your rolling pin. Now come to your pizza stone and unroll it. Voila! So you can see we have a little overlap, and I like to make a little crust. You don't have to, but I love some crust. Me and my five-year-old like the crust. So I do this almost the way you would like a pie, I mean it is a pizza pie, and then give it a good press because it's gonna go in that hot oven. We don't want the seam to come undone. So press down, there it is. Now it just needs a little olive oil and then into the oven to par bake. So just drizzle, oh it's maybe two teaspoons of olive oil right over top and use your hands, rub it on that crust. This just adds a little glisten. It's an optional step, but I've been making this pizza dough for seven, eight years now, and this is just part of the step. I love how it looks when it comes out. Okay, perfect. Now into the oven to par-bake. This is also a meal prep step. You can par-bake it, let your crust cool, and then wrap it up in some cling wrap or aluminum foil and pop it into the freezer. So when you wanna do pizza night next, all you have to do is take your crust out, put your sauce and toppings on, and throw it into the oven. For the sheet tray version, Start with your dough, 
prep your surface like we just did. Then I usually use my hands and start to form it into a little bit of a rectangular shape. Then we go rolling pin. Start to roll. Center out, center out. And this is homemade pizza. It's supposed to look homemade. Make it how you would like it. If you want it thinner and have a thinner tray, go for that. I make sheet tray pizza probably 99% of the time because I'm feeding myself, my husband, and three boys. Two eight-year-olds and a five-year-old. So the sheet tray is just more efficient for me to make a large pizza for my hungry crew. And then to check that it's the right size, grab your tray and it'll fit. Let's top these pizzas. We have our toppings and our sauce here. Our crust, let's get going. This one is going to be for my kids. Two out of three which are pepperoni purists, so it's gonna be a sauce, cheese, and pepperoni pizza. Got our sauce from the fridge that we made earlier. You just take spoonfuls and then use the back of the spoon to spread it out. Again, do the sauce to your liking. You wanna spread a nice thin layer. So using the back of your spoon to spread it around to get it all the way up to the crust. There we go. This is the perfect amount for me and my family. Next for cheese, I have some shredded mozzarella. Doing a thin layer here. I like a thin layer of cheese, then pepperoni. And then I put a little cheese on top to just hold that to pepperoni or whatever your toppings are on. Okay, this is looking good. Now for pepperoni. Here's an opportunity for fun. You can make designs. My family has been doing Potter and Pizza Night probably for the past year, year and a half. We're reading the Harry Potter books, and then when we're done, we watch the movie, and I started making pizza for movie nights. So we're doing Potter and Pizza, and I've used pepperoni or veggies and made an HP for Harry Potter. I attempted to make some Harry Potter glasses. You can have fun with it. You could do someone's initials. You could do someone's age. But toppings are a way to make the pizza fun. Okay, so our pepperoni is on there. Now it's time for a little cheese on top. Just to like hold everything down. Now this looks fantastic. Better than delivery pizza. This pepperoni pizza is ready to go. Back into the oven at 450 for about 10 minutes until the cheese is melted and it's golden, glorious, and bubbly. Now for our sheet tray pizza. Sauce goes on, spin it all around, and then this guy is gonna get loaded with veggies and all kinds of delicious toppings. Pizza is an awesome vehicle for other things. I know pepperoni is traditional American, but I love veggies on a pizza especially caramelized onion. Mm. I'll even sprinkle a little feta on my pizza. It sounds a little unconventional, but if you happen to be a non-eater, the feta adds that umaminess that you can kind of only get from meat. It's really good. Sauce is on. Now, I'm gonna show you something. I have some fresh mozzarella, and fresh mozzarella is higher in their water content, so it can make our pizza a little watery. So I blotted it with a dish towel just to get a little extra water out. And you could leave it whole, but I'm gonna rip it up cheese. Now it's time for caramelized onion. Oh, look at this. Love caramelized onion on pizza. Plus, onion is awesome with its prebiotic fiber, which helps our digestive system. So another lovely benefit of this veg. And again, I just space it out. Diced bell pepper. Mushrooms. Mushrooms give some more umami flavor. Now you can pre-cook them if you'd like. Sometimes I do that, but today I have them raw and they will cook down a little bit in the oven. Now for spinach. This is baby spinach. I just like to tear it. I don't put a ton of spinach, but it is nice for a little extra veg and pretty color. So tear it up so it's small bits. Who wants to bite into a giant piece of spinach? There we go. Oh, it's looking so pretty. Okay. And then I have fresh basil. I will put on as soon as it comes out of the oven because basil burns easily. So if you put it on right after it comes out of the oven, it'll warm it up and cook it just a smidge. And then this is the adult pizza. Half for me, half for my husband. So I know he wants a little pepperoni on his half. Stick those on. 
And then, remember my tip from before? A little sprinkle of cheese to hold everything on there so that when it's cooked and you bite in, all the toppings won't just fall off. Into the oven, 450 for about 10 to 12 minutes. If you have a round pizza, we wanna cut it into eight pieces. So we're gonna slice right down the middle. Oh, you can hear the crispiness of the crust. Back here. We've cut down the middle this way, we've cut down the middle the other way. Now we're gonna cut those in half to get our eight. Fall off on me. And when we make pizza at home, we can control all the ingredients, of course, but we're controlling the sodium. So to compare this pizza to a delivery pizza, we have much less sodium. There's 810 milligrams of sodium in takeout pizza versus 536 in this pizza. And there is half the fat in our pizza and less calories. So all good things when you make it at home. Let's take a look. Ooh, stringy cheese. Nice crust. This is way better than takeout any day. Now it's time to eat. You could serve this with a nice side salad or some other cooked veggie, but let me tell you my go-to. A nice crudite platter, i.e. sliced raw veggies. I like to set this out while the pizzas are finishing in the oven when everyone's getting hungry and we smell the pizza. And that means everyone's gonna start munching on the veggies. And I'll tell you, this plate usually gets cleared by the time the pizza's done. And that means we have loaded up on fiber, antioxidants. You can see all the vitamin C, the beta carotene in here. We filled up on great stuff and then we're gonna jump into our whole wheat pizza. I like to add a little kick with some crushed red pepper flakes, just like you would if you were in a pizza shop. Just a sprinkling and it's perfect. Now it's time for the family to dig in. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspired you for your next pizza night at home. And if you like this video, hit the like button below. And don't forget to subscribe to follow along for more delicious recipes like this one and nutrition tips. I will see you in the next video. Bon appetit.